November 2021, NASA announces that they will begin selection of a new group of astronauts. This class of astronauts will be the largest by far of any group that has been previously selected. It will be approximately twice the size as the previous record holder. It will include a number of unusual circumstances that have not been allowed to previously. The most notable exception is that it will offer the opportunity for skilled tradesmen, electricians, plumbers, welders, construction workers, to be included as part of this mission. Scientists will have the opportunity, as many have before, to be a part of this. However, it says that there will be a recommendation for geologists and biologists and universities will have the opportunity to partner with NASA in selecting some of their faculty to be a part of this mission. They will serve for a period of five to six years and then return back to their university. Periodically, they may visit their university to give guest lectures and other things to help maintain support. There will also be many engineers that will be selected. One unusual thing is that these engineers can actually be private citizens or members of corporations. The corporation can pay their way through the training and also to be a part of any future mission that they might one day belong to. Some of these may be included as a part of NASA's contracts to help maintain the equipment that they will be relying on for future missions, but some of these will just simply be a part of the expedition without having any particular purpose pre-designed, although they will still be required to meet the same qualifications that any astronaut would be. As has been previously done, astronauts from other countries are submitted to be included as part of this group. NASA welcomes a very diverse audience to be included. Medical professionals are also sought, particularly those from remote experience such as Antarctica or the mountains of the Himalayas or other areas where they had to work as trained medical professionals without some of the extensive things that are available on most of the hospitals on planet Earth. This group of astronauts had two months to send their applications and in January NASA began to review them. They reviewed these applications. There were 10 times more applications than had been sent to any previous announcement of astronaut training opportunities in the past. These astronauts would be reviewed initially to determine if they met the basic qualifications. Hundreds of them would be interviewed. It would take NASA six months to go through all of them. But finally, towards the end of June, they have announced that of the thousands and thousands of astronaut hopefuls, 60 of them would be selected for their training. Of these 60, six of them would be pilots. This is a very low number compared to previous pilots in previous missions. Typically, one third or more of an astronaut class is pilots. To have only six is rather unusual, but as spacecraft have become more automated, it is no longer required to have as many pilots, and also, the spacecraft have gone to larger sizes. Fifteen of them were skilled tradesmen. Among these included those who had had experience in multiple areas, in being an electrician, and being a plumber, and being a welder in construction equipment. Still, this represented a very vast difference compared to what NASA has previously done. Twelve of these were engineers and technicians that would maintain the equipment. Several of these were done as commercial astronauts that would not actually be a part of NASA, but they would receive training by NASA in order to do their duties as astronauts. Twenty-seven of these were scientists. Of this twenty-seven, seventeen of them had been identified as faculty astronauts, they would only serve for a period of time, and the remaining 10 would be permanent NASA astronauts. What was unusual is that the vast majority of these were either biologists or geologists, only having a handful of chemists, physicists, and astronomers. Six of these were medical professionnel. 
that had had experience sending people to Antarctica and in the Himalayas. It was also announced, when the astronauts were in fact announced, that this group of astronauts would have the potential to be among the first astronauts on the surface of Mars. The first six months of their training was very much like that of any astronaut. They did survival training, they did training in the equipment they'd be using, they helped to build their endurance and undergo more medical tests to ensure that everything was perfect. They learned all of the different things that they needed to learn to be an astronaut. After this period of time, 50 of these group of astronauts would be selected for a further training. In addition to 10 from the previous corps of astronauts from NASA and 12 Russian cosmonauts, this group would go to Siberia into three specially designed bases. Each one of these bases would hold 24 astronauts and there train them in the various applications that they would do on Mars. They would have the equipment similar to what they would have on Mars, although it would not be the flight qualified versions of these. They would meet adequate standards. They would have to ensure survival, go on the expeditions they would need to do. They were not put under full testing of what the environment would be like on Mars. For instance, while the speed of light delay was simulated for their communications with mission control, they were allowed to talk to their loved ones in real time. This training went on for approximately one year, beginning towards the beginning of January 2023 and ending at the end of the year. The astronaut hopefuls were sent home in the middle of December, there to spend one last Christmas with their loved ones. In 2024, they resumed their training there, they would continue to learn the systems. They would learn the up-to-date Big Falcon rocket systems and everything they needed to know. The pilot candidates were actually sent in a couple of short-term flights in orbit, visits to the International Space Station to bring supplies, just to make sure that they really fully understood all of the systems. And thus, every pilot had gained flight experience. They would be preparing there for their eventual mission to Mars, which would take place towards the end of that year. Meanwhile, back at Mars, the missions that had previously been sent to test things were working well. The solar panels had almost all functioned as desired and in fact were producing 140 watts of power, kilowatts of power each. This wasn't quite as much as they had planned for. Some of the solar cells tended to be defective after this journey, but it was sufficient for them to prove the concepts. Of the 20 robots that were sent on the surface of Mars, 16 of them are still functioning. They exceeded their goal. Their goal was to go 20 miles each on the surface of Mars in search of the various chemicals that were needed in order to sustain life. And in fact, collectively, these 20 robots had traveled 1,000 miles on the surface of Mars, more than twice what they needed to do. They were able to find not only water, but aluminum, iron, and better soil samples than, that did not have some of the harmful perchlorates that had been found in previous soil samples. These would be recommended for traveling to Mars. In short, everything is going well, and the astronauts are well under their training for their expected mission to Mars. If all goes well at the end of this year, they will begin that journey. But that will be continued in another story. Thank you much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.